The rocky shores of the UK provide a multitude of habitats that sustain a plethora of different marine species. From the desert-like splash zone to the constantly submerged regions of the lower shore, the variety of biotic and abiotic factors here has led to a highly diverse and demanding environment, where only the most resilient organisms can survive. A specialist in rocky shore survival is the starfish. Although found in all oceans of the world, they thrive particularly well off the coastline of the UK. Members of the Echinodan phylum, there are over 2,000 known species of starfish, who contrary to their name are not fish at all, as they are much more closely related to sea cucumbers, urchins and gastropod mollusks. Most species are characterised by their radially symmetric bodies, consisting of a central disc and arms. This means that their bodies can be split into equal parts, commonly into fives. The two species commonly found off the coast of the UK are the cushion star and the common star. The cushion star is a small, flattened, soft-looking starfish, which can most frequently be found in thin crevices and under boulders in the middle shore region. Most cushion stars only grow to be about 5 cm across, and the dorsal surface is covered with small, rough, projecting spines. Underneath, the star is flat with a central mouth. Their colours sometimes vary, but more often than not, they are an orange-brown. Cushions are omnivores and will eat almost anything they can find, rotting seaweed, a dead fish, and sometimes even other starfish. The common starfish can be found from the mid-shore to the lower shore, mostly in larger rock pools. Unlike the cushion star, the common star is a predator, feeding on shellfish such as cockles, mussels and barnacles. Common stars are significantly larger than cushion stars, which aids their predatory nature. It means they can cover ground at quicker speeds. With no heart or brain, the starfish is biologically fascinating. Starfish are sensitive to touch, light, orientation, temperature and status of the water around them. Their tubed feet have the highest amount of nerve receptors. They can also respond to chemicals, for example enabling them to detect odours like food and predators. At the end of their arms are eye spots. These respond to light. Starfish lack a centralised brain, but they do possess a fairly complex nervous system. The general principle is that they have a nervous ring around the mouth and a radial nerve running along the ambulacra region of each arm parallel to the radial canal. The ring and the radial nerves receive sensory input and coordinate the starfish's balance and which direction it travels. Starfish are opportunistic feeders. Once they have detected a food source and the arms have carried the star to this destination, the cushion and common stars display a bizarre and fascinating method of food consumption. Unlike primitive starfish, species who simply swallow their prey whole, cushion and common stars are able to avert their cardiac stomach from the main body, which surrounds and then begins to digest their food. When feeding on species like clams or other bivalves, a common star will use its arms to separate the two shells and poke a small amount of its stomach into the gap and release digestive enzymes all over its prey. The stomach surrounds the digesting material and later retracts back into the central disc. Much like a hydraulic system, varying pressures in fluid-filled canals across the body aid the starfish in locomotion and food manipulation. The entire system is composed of numerous tubed feet. Water is forced into these tubed feet, causing the feet to then extend and push against the ground. Water enters through a small hole called the madreporite on the surface of the starfish. Then the water is channeled into a circular ring canal. From this, radial tubes run outwards along the arms of the starfish in grooves. Each canal groove gives rise to an ampulla. Contraction of the muscles in the ampulla causes the tube feet to stretch as water is forced into them. This whole structure allows for very slow movement in both common and cushioned stars. Most starfish are capable of reproducing asexually or sexually. However, both cushion and common starfish have two separate sexes. Each of the five arms contains two gonads. To allow for external fertilization of their eggs, gonopores are located in the gonads. On average, two and a half million eggs are released into shallow rock pools at one time from each female. The eggs then later develop into free swimming larvae called bipinaria. There you have it, with no brain, a particularly funky feeding mechanism, and arms that act as levers, sex organs, and stomachs all at the same time. These curious creatures clearly are the stars of our seas.